In today's video, we're going to be showing you how you can create custom Blazor admin screens quickly by leveraging the ServiceStack's Blazor components library, giving us the best user experience in the shortest time. Having productive web interfaces for your back office staff or admin users can save a huge amount of time by enabling non-developers to manage metadata, users, sales, and other business needs. But since these pages are admin only and are not visible by customers, the time developers spend on these backend pages can be pretty limited. So getting as much functionality working quickly with the ability to customize later can make things a lot easier. The ServiceStack Blazor library has been growing to include more components for just this kind of use case for your Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor server applications. To illustrate this approach, we're going to take a look at an application we've been developing called Blazor Diffusion, where we needed a way to manage data in the backend, but wanted something integrated directly with the main Blazor user interface. Blazor Diffusion is an AI text to image generation front end written with Blazor, starting from our own Blazor server template. The project is on GitHub if you want to take a look at how it was built and how it enables users to browse high quality AI generated imagery that's curated by our community of users. You can also sign up to generate your own as well as share and like others to help curate amazing galleries of images generated by Stable Diffusion. One feature Blazor Diffusion has is a curated list of modifiers which are text segments used in the prompt that generates the image. This list makes it easier for those looking to generate images of a similar style as well as the ability to highlight the ones most used with high quality results. To manage these modifiers and other data in the SQLite database, we're going to need some admin pages optimized for specific tasks centered around moderation. To get started, we're going to create a landing page for admin users to navigate to the different pages of our custom admin UI. The Blazor Diffusion project is using the Blazor server template since the development experience can be faster than iterating with the Blazor WebAssembly template. And since the components in the ServiceStack.Blazor library support both Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor server, we can migrate later to Blazor WebAssembly for the more flexible flexible hosting options that it provides. In the Blazor Diffusion app host project under the pages directory, we will create a new admin subfolder to contain our future admin pages. We will start with an index.razor file that will be our landing page for admin users, so we'll also need to restrict it to users with the admin role using the authorize attribute. On this page, we'll want two features, a simple heading and a list of links of resources for admin users to manage. All of the servicestack.blazor components are designed for use with Tailwind for CSS. So if you have a favorite source for great looking Tailwind components, dropping them into either our Blazor Tailwind or Blazor server templates can save a lot of time and make your application have a professional looking design with minimal effort. To build the list of links, we're going to be using the nav list component from the ServiceStack Blazor library. Within the nav list component, let's create a link for managing creatives. Creatives contain all the data used by the stable diffusion model to generate the artwork. We manage links within a nav list using individual nav list item components for each link. Also, to manage the modifiers, let's create a nav list item to a page for managing our predefined modifiers. Each nav list item can specify a title, href, icon, and own render fragment. The icon attribute takes an image info data type, which is populated by using the icon attribute on the related model type. Now let's make the two pages for managing the data for creatives and modifiers. As a moderator or admin, we need at least a way to query and filter the data, as well as a way to edit and delete creatives and modifier entries. 
To achieve this with the least amount of effort initially, we can use the servicestack.blazor auto query grid component specifying the model type of modifier and related auto query request DTOs to the API's property. Saving our changes and our modifiers admin page now has a fully functional grid hooked up to our modifiers auto query service with validation, paging and filtering all wired up. We can do the same for the creatives page as well and we now have an entry point in our application to manage data in both these tables. To improve these pages visually, we can use the breadcrumbs component to quickly add another method to navigate back and forth between admin pages. We can also make a custom layout for the admin page specifically to let our admin users take advantage of the dark and light mode support the ServerStack Blazor components have built in. The Blazor Diffusion application itself is set to dark mode by default using the Tailwind Dark class on the default layout page. Our custom admin layout page, we can expose a toggle switch to change between light and dark mode. The dark mode toggle component is also included in the servicestack.blazor library, so it's easy to add dark mode support to your application. Adding an underscore imports file that imports our admin layout and we get a toggle for light and dark mode for all our admin pages. Another quality of life feature we could add would be to enable contextual navigation between admin pages. For example, when viewing data in the creative admin page, we could navigate to view the modifiers admin page and only show modifiers related to the creative we selected. The creative table has a one-to-many relationship with modifiers used to generate a set of images. So the auto query service for creatives does return the IDs for the modifiers related to a single creative we're interested in, but it doesn't know about our custom admin pages. We can achieve what we want by customizing the auto query grid component on the creatives admin page to specify the columns we want to display and for the modifiers column we can use a custom template. The custom template for the modifiers column will then link back to the admin modifiers page passing in the query string of IDs which is a comma separated list of modifier IDs. The auto query grid component on the modifiers page will then automatically pass query strings to the configured auto query service in the component. In this case, the IDs query string is matching an implicit convention feature to perform a SQL in query with the ID property, which results in displaying only the modifiers related to the creative we selected. Continuing this pattern for the other admin pages, we can now manage artists, which are similar to modifiers but contain a list of predefined artists, albums, which are a way for moderators to curate groupings of generated images, and finally artifacts themselves, which are the individual generated images that are sometimes flagged as not safe for work or can be specified as the pinned image for a specific creative. Each of these tables relates to one or more different moderation tasks that can use data from other tables, and the standard auto-generated forms just sometimes aren't suited to what you need. Thankfully, the auto query grid component is customizable in many ways, making it a lot quicker to get a better user experience without implementing your own grid. One of these customizations is the custom edit form that can replace the auto-generated edit form itself. Here we're using a custom component in the Blazor Diffusion application for viewing and pinning images specifically that notifies the parent admin page when to close the custom edit dialog. Since most creatives already have pinned images, we also want to optimize the experience to only show those that are missing a pinned image and that need action. This predefined filtering can be done by overriding the configure query attribute to add a query parameter where the primary artifact ID is empty. Then we use a custom tab component to trigger a change in filtering behavior and refresh the same grid. Moving on to managing artists, the auto-generated edit form doesn't support complex properties like list of strings, but all the other properties for editing an artist work fine. 
Instead of using a custom edit form though, we can attribute the update artist types property with an input attribute to use a different control. Here we will use the tags control since we are storing a list of freeform strings. This approach gives us a great user experience for editing artists and our auto query grid control remains concise. Lastly, let's look at albums. Here we have a many to many relationship between album and artifact using the album artifact table. We need to be able to both remove artifacts that already exist and add new ones to existing albums. We can use a standard auto query grid for managing the metadata about a specific album and for managing the contents of an album we use a tab control to switch between multiple auto query grids that show rows for each related table. When editing an album contents, we use a single auto query grid in a modal dialog that we can switch between adding and removing artifacts. We don't even need to use a custom edit form here since we're only viewing and selecting artifacts we want removed or added. We can use the row selected event to track the selected items for each and a save button to trigger an API call for our added and removed artifacts. Now we have a great looking set of admin pages integrated with our application directly, let's test out the workflow for managing these modifiers. As an admin, common keywords from prompts we notice are producing excellent results for generated images. For example, users specifying steampunk in their prompt are generating character portraits with minimal artifacts and not necessarily with the style of steampunk. An admin would then go to the admin menu via the link in the header, select the modifiers page and add steampunk as an option that can now be selected from the list on the create page. The category field is also now a drop down control with a pre-populated list of values. This is done by using the input attribute type of select on the request DTOs and we can use service stack sharp script syntax to dynamically populate the option of values using the eval allowable values property. This means by using SharpScript, you can evaluate custom data sources to greatly enhance your UI with relevant metadata in extremely flexible ways. Another phrase that's helping to produce amazing visuals is crepuscular rays. Creatives specifying crepuscular rays in their prompt are not only getting great imagery of sunlight peering through clouds, but also producing some imagery with some great lighting effects in different situations. The admin can then add crepuscular rays as a new modifier and when used together with steampunk can produce amazing imagery for character portraits. For example, specifying the prompt of Portrait of Henry Cavill in a scenic environment combined with modifiers like steampunk, crepuscular rays and a few others, we get the following generated images. Trying another with actress Natalie Portman, we get a few great images with all the concept mentioned in our description in a single image. If you want to create your own imagery using Blazor Diffusion, you can see the hosted site over at blazordiffusion.com. Or if you want to see how else we utilize the service stack Blazor components in both the application and additional admin sections, you can view the source code in our GitHub repository for which I'll put a link in the description. Service stack auto query services and low code generated UIs are a great place to start for admin user functionality. But when it comes time to have a more streamlined experience, it's hard to beat directly integrated custom UIs designed specifically to perform common tasks. The service stack Blazor components library makes that initial migration as painless as possible so you can focus on what changes would best suit your use case and your users. Well that's it for this video, if you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the Service Stack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. Service Stack is free for individuals and open source projects so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.